Welcome back, everybody. Joe Everest, the fence expert. If you've watched any of my other review videos, you know what you're in for. Jeremy goes out and finds videos that he thinks that I'd like to review for you guys. The reviews typically have a positive spin. We all know how many negative reviews are out there in YouTube land, and I'd like to change that. So without further review, here we go. All right, so it looks like this video is titled How to Install a Fence Post by b &O Craftsman. For a link to the original video itself, we'll have that in the description below. So let's talk about hole depth real quick. So 24 inches is typically the minimum depth, and you want to go at least, it depends on the area you're in, right? At least six inches deeper than the frost line. Now, this could be in the southern United States where the frost line is less than 24 inches. Uh, typically, 24 inches is a good minimum. Uh, ASTM standard actually says minimum would be 30 inches, so take that uh, as you will. As far as the post width, it says uh, tw 12 inches wide, which is a pretty good rule of thumb. It looks like he's installing four by four posts. Three times the diameter of the post is a pretty good rule of thumb for the diameter of your hole. So a four inch post would get you a 12 inch hole. Now he's using post hole diggers, which are perfectly fine. We use those to clean out holes, but it looks like he's had several posts to set. I would probably recommend renting a digging machine, whether a pull behind unit like a, a groundhog or a little beaver, or you could actually rent a skid style digger like a Toro Dingo. Most rental houses have the Toro Dingos uh, in stock if they're not out on rent already. Uh, they're really not that expensive to rent for the day, or if you've got a pretty big project, rent for several days. Uh, it'll save you quite a bit of time and it'll save your back. So it looks like his string line is offset. So meaning that the string line is probably maybe say a foot off of where he wants that uh, post to end up, the inside face of that post. Typically a good idea for this exact reason. The string line can stay up while you're digging the hole. So that's actually not a four before. That looks like it's probably a six by six post. Uh, so 12 inch post diameter might be a little bit small. A six inch post would, you'd probably want to be 18 inches on your post diameter, depending on the application, I guess. So he's checking the plumb, and then he's measuring the post spacing uh, off of that standoff line, his string line there, to see exactly where that post needs to be. Like I said, the benefit here is that the string can stay up during the entire process rather than having to either take it down or move it during the install process. So the post was a little bit too far away from the string line, so he had to shave the hole over towards the string. Uh, I think us fence guys have all shaved several holes in our days. You know, so this, this can go either way, right? So he's putting stones at the bottom of the hole. We've seen this in previous review videos. In the New Zealand review video, where they had put a solid uh, chunk of stone, or a, I believe it was a paver actually, in the bottom of the hole. The idea here is it keeps the post up off the ground when it's being set. You know, in the comments, in the comments after those videos, or the comments for those videos, you really see it go either way. You know, some guys and gals really prefer to have the post stand up off the ground. Other posts say... That's nonsense, and it's an unnecessary step. It's probably, good, my opinion being, it's probably a good idea. I don't think it could hurt the post being sat or being stood up off the ground uh, to avoid ground contact at the bottom of the post. Does it help? Eh, I think the jury's out on that one, but does it hurt? Probably not. I 
All right. So as these videos do, we're going to get into the conversation on concrete. Wet set versus dry set. If it's dry set, is it compacted and compressed? One of the benefits to dry setting posts and compacting them is that the post is ready to use as soon as you're done compacting it. Uh, you don't typically need to brace it up and wait for the concrete to cure to each their own on the concrete. I mean, here's the thing, guys. When we get into this discussion, and I'll say it every time, if you've got a process that works for you, that's probably the best process for you. Now, if you're willing to think outside of your own process and experiment a little bit, there's other methods out there. But again, at the end of the day, if your process works for you, it's probably the best one to use. You can never check the plumb of a post too many times. I like that he's checked it several times to make sure nothing got out of whack when he was installing the braces that the post is exactly where he wants it to go. So it looks like he's mixed the concrete himself. Uh, well, they're in the wheelbarrow. So it's hard to tell whether he used it using individual pieces and parts, meaning aggregate, Portland, and then combining them together, uh, or if he used a bagged concrete product. Uh, but he did mix it beforehand so that he knew what the consistency looks like before he puts it in the hole. Uh, it's good to see. Okay, so there we have it. Got the post in the ground, it's level, and now all that's left to do is to let the concrete dry probably at least a day or two, and then I'll fill in the dirt around it and pack it down. So here's a couple little tips when you're doing this. When you're picking out your wood, a lot of times the stores will already have this pre-sorted for this, but when you're looking, make sure you get ones that have the eye. The heart, they call it heartwood, the center of the wood, because if you get one that's like that, it has less tendency to want to warp through the years. But if you get one that's got, you're more on the edges of it, don't, don't bother picking that one up because it's going to warp quicker than the other ones. You know, that's interesting. I hadn't, I don't know that I've heard that piece of advice with, uh, with the eye or the heart of the lumber being in the center of the post, preventing warping and twisting. Um, I've typically always heard that it was due to one side drying faster than the other. But, you know, I, I suppose that makes sense, though, because it has more of a, I don't know if you want to call it a spine down the middle of the post rather than not having that dense support. Uh, interesting observation for sure. Um, and you saw me put gravel on the bottom. That's optional. You don't have to do that. I like to do it just to keep it up off the dirt because basically there's no dirt touching this except once I fill in dirt around it. And that will just keep you know, one, one more thing to make it last longer. I guess one comment on that is – Typically, when you see raw end posts, so there are still folks out there that set posts directly into dirt without concrete or gravel or anything around it uh, to each their own, right? But even when you're setting with dirt directly to dirt, typically the aerobic zone of the soil where you're going to see most of the rot is in the first couple inches of the soil. Whether the bottom of the post touches the ground, I don't know that that would encourage rot any more than having it in contact, only because, like I said, the aerobic zone of the soil is typically a couple inches. This supposed to set two foot deep. So I don't know that if it were in contact with the soil that it would encourage rot anymore. My opinion and my experience. Now, there have been comments before. We've talked about this before, about whether the post comes in contact with the ground at the bottom of the post and encourages rot. Some folks have seen rot 
at the bottom of the post climbing up the post. So uh, it could have to do with the region. It could have to do with the acidity of the acidity of the soil, maybe. Um, yeah, it's hard to tell. But like I say, it can't hurt, though. Having that post up off the ground to where you avoid ground contact, I don't know that it could hurt at all. And another thing, this is not the only way to do it. There are many ways to do it. I prefer to mix my concrete, but I've seen some people put it in dry and then let the earth kind of moisten it and then harden I prefer this so I know it's solid and it's not going anywhere. I went as deep as I could on this one. I would recommend doing that, but this is a corner post for a big gate. Now my other ones that I have are only 4x4s and I went 20 inches on those. So you can play around with it and if you can't get as deep, make it wider so you put more concrete. So um, I hope you got a little bit out of this video. That's true to a certain extent. Um, if you can't get to depth, you could always try to add mass by making a wider hole. Um, but that that advice will only get you so far. You know, take it to the extreme. If you had a you know a post set one foot, but it was a two foot wide hole, it still wouldn't have the support that a two foot deep, one foot wide hole would have. I hope that makes sense. Some tips for your next build if you're doing a fence. But if not, share this, like it, comment, subscribe to this channel, and uh, check out the other videos. Thanks for watching. So this is also something else to note. He left the concrete a few inches below grade, which is always a nice touch. You can backfill the dirt over the concrete. The dirt will then seed so that you're not left looking at the concrete. Now, I understand the other side of that argument is that it can promote rot right at that level. Uh, right where the soil comes in contact with the post. I've also seen posts that have concrete revealed or you know exposed that also show rot right where the concrete meets the post, even if they were sloped away from the post. I think inevitably rot is going to happen or will occur with wood posts, regardless if you know it's backfilled with dirt, whether the concrete is revealed with the slope. I think you're still going to deal with rot at one point or another. All right, guys. Another great video. Like I said, if you'd like to watch the original video, we'll link that in the comments below. Let me know what you think. What would you do differently or what do you think he did? Spot on. I'd love to hear your opinions on that. Until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.